What's up, y'all? I got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. We about to get into explosive lawsuit unveiled. Did he sign Christian Combs accused of S.A.? You dig? Shout out to I'm not a lawyer, but I asked her if I could react to her videos, and she said thanks for asking, and she's cool with it. Y'all know I don't know nothing about a lawyer, being a lawyer, the law, nothing. Just. So shout out to her. She breaks it down thoroughly. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe. All right. I'm not a lawyer, but I read all 31 pages of the latest lawsuit filed in the Diddy universe. So let me recap what's being alleged. If you haven't watched my last video, please go watch it before you continue on with this video. Okay, so the attorney that filed this lawsuit... Damn, the last video. What's the last video? There's trouble for lawyer in Diddy lawsuit. Okay, maybe I need to watch that first. I'm not a lawyer, but there... Oh, yeah, let's watch this one first. There's a new lawsuit in the Diddy universe, but this time it was filed against Christian Combs... Diddy son, Diddy, and some John and Jane Doe's. Now, before I tell you what is alleged in this lawsuit, I first want to tell you about the attorney that filed this lawsuit because it's getting messy with the attorneys. Oh, so what? this is Tyrone Blackburn. He is the attorney representing the plaintiff in this new lawsuit, but he also represents Rodney Jones. And if you don't remember, Rodney Jones is the plaintiff in the lawsuit that was filed back in February and was recently amended. That lawsuit has a number of defendants, including Diddy, Justin Combs, Cuba Gooding Jr., as well as Motown Records, Universal Music Group, and the CEO of Universal Music Group, whose name is Lucien Charles Grange. Okay, now follow me because this might be a ride. So for the last couple months, since that Rodney Jones lawsuit was initially filed, there has been a lot of back and forth between Tyrone Blackburn and the attorney that represents Lucien Grange, Motown Records, and UMG. That attorney's name is David, and again, he represents all three of them. Motown Records, UMG, and Lucien Grange. So after some back and forth, Donald sent a scathing and shady letter addressed to Tyrone, basically saying that, that the lawsuit he filed on behalf of Rodney Jones is completely and demonstrably fabricated and untrue. Demonstrably. And just to be clear, David, speaking specifically about the claims against his clients, he is not talking about the claims against Diddy or anybody else in that lawsuit. Okay, so here's the letter that Donald sent, and I'm gonna read just a couple pieces from it. Quote, this just scratches the surface of your complete failure to conduct anything remotely resembling a reasonable inquiry into the facts before filing a pleading filled with offensively false accusations. Donald goes on to say that the RICO allegations are wholly deficient, substituting non-specific group allegations and conclusions for a single factual allegation connecting our clients to your imagined over 20-year alleged criminal enterprise in which our clients have never had any involvement Imagined is part crazy. Of the letter they quote, said... God, they said he lying like he made it up. It is not merely that the entirety of the complaint as it pertains to our clients is scandalously false, accusing our clients of engaging in criminal activity when the accusations have not the slightest factual basis. It is that you indisputably did not conduct the slightest inquiry into the facts. Instead, finding it expedient to spew this unadulterated mass of baseless accusations as to which you were utterly indifferent to the truth. Damn in a publicly filed complaint. The sheer recklessness of your complaint go goes beyond any complaint I have seen in nearly 50 years of litigating in the federal and state courts in New York. That superlative is no compliment. I intend to examine whether, in addition to the other offenses you have committed, you are also guilty of ethical violations in the filing of this complaint, which I believe you most certainly are. So, they about to switch this up on Rodney and send Rodney to jail for lying? Is that what y'all got from it? Because that's kind of what I'm getting from it. Okay, last quote. We understand as well that you personally provided advanced copies of this complaint to the press. In doing so under New York law and potentially California law, you have forfeited whatever benefits of the litigation privilege that might arguably attend to the filing of a knowingly false pleading and have subjected yourself and your client to well-founded defamation claims. Depending on how swiftly you withdraw or amend this complaint to delete all reference to our clients, we will evaluate when and where they will proceed against you and your clients. Okay, hold on. Do y'all think <coughs> that these lawyers would literally file a lawsuit 
with no videos. I want to know what y'all think. Do y'all think these lawyers would file a lawsuit against Diddy with no videos? Let me know what y'all think about that because I think that that's crazy as hell. Like, it's no way I'm taking a case on all these celebrities as a lawyer with no video proof. I guess depending on the laws, but... Yeah, hearsay is... Oh. Obviously pissed. Okay, you ready for the short version? David saying that Tyrone filed this lawsuit knowing that it was BS against his clients. And that is a Rule 11 violation. So let's talk about Rule 11. Rule 11 is a federal rule that when you file a lawsuit, you as the attorney are acknowledging and verifying that you have done a reasonable amount of investigating the claims or like looking into them before filing. It also says that by filing a lawsuit, attorneys are agreeing that the suit is not for any improper use, such as to harass or increase costs. And the attorneys further certify to the court that the claims are warranted by law and that the allegations are supported by evidence. So again, David is saying Tyrone included his clients knowing that the allegations against them specifically are false and unsupported by evidence, and he did it for the purpose of media attention. Now, here's where things get sticky. Okay. Tyrone Blackburn has another case in the Southern District of New York, and the judge in that case just made an order saying the same thing about Tyrone. Mm. In one part of the order, the judge writes, Tyrone Blackburn has, as he admits, failed to meet his Rule 11 obligations in this case. It appears that this is a part of a pattern. Mm. The court declines to impose sanctions pursuant to Rule 11 or its inherent power, but will refer him to this court's grievance committee. There is a basis to believe that Blackburn is filing cases in this district without diligently investigating the existence of either jurisdiction or venue as required by Rule 11. Then the judge kind of goes over Rule 11 that by filing any motions, lawsuits, or anything to the court, an attorney is certifying that to the best of his or her knowledge, information, and belief, they have done a reasonable amount of investigating the suit or the motion for any improper use. The judge continues on saying that. So they saying Rodney got a history of basically filing lawsuits that are false. Well, filing lawsuits with false allegations. That's crazy. At, at the March 5th conference for this particular case, defense counsel reported that Tyrone Blackburn had told her he filed this case in federal court because doing so would make the press more likely to pick it up. A reasonable inference from Blackburn's pattern of behavior is that he improperly files cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. Indeed, his submissions to this court have been rife with disturbing allegations hey. against the defendants and defense counsel. So while the judge did not sanction Blackburn, he was referred to the grievance committee of the district for whatever action they deem appropriate. So all of this is happening in this other case that Tyrone Blackburn has. But last week, David, the attorney representing Motown, UMG, and Lucien Grange, found out about that order. And so mm -hmm. he wrote a letter to the judge that's overseeing the Diddy case. That's basically, you see what Tyrone is getting in trouble for doing in this case? That's basically what he's doing here and what I've been saying that he's doing here. In this new letter, David ends his saying, it's painfully obvious that Mr. Blackburn believes he is free to flagrantly violate Rule 11 in furtherance of trying to garner press attention for himself without regard for the truth and without regard for the human consequences of his conduct. We have served Mr. Blackburn with a Rule 11 motion, but this court has the inherent power to address Mr. Blackburn's conduct, and, and we believe that Judge Coates' opinion from the other case and the facts set forth therein are relevant for this court's consideration. Ciao. So just to be clear, all of this has no bearing on the federal criminal investigation that's happening, but it definitely mm. may have an impact on this Rodney Jones lawsuit and potentially this new lawsuit that's been filed against Christian Combs, Diddy, and the Jane and John Doe's. All right. So now y'all want me to tell you about the new lawsuit against Christian Combs? Come back. I'll make another video. So, okay. <clears throat> I get all of that. My thing is, like, how do you just file a lawsuit with a bunch of BS on the lawsuit and the lawyer like, oh, yeah, we got a case, and you don't look up nothing, don't see no videos or nothing. And... Rodney suing Diddy for all his hellacious reasons. Why, and I'm new, not true. Why is the state or I guess the, the feds suing, not suing Diddy, but why are they, um, why is it a case open 
for Diddy with the feds. Is that the trafficking situation? Do y'all know? Let me know down in the comments because that's what she just said. It may not, basically it has nothing to do with what the feds have going on with him, but everything with um, this guy, this Rodney guy. I'm not a lawyer, but I read all 31 pages of the latest lawsuit filed in the Diddy universe. So let me recap <coughs> what's being alleged. If you haven't watched my last video, please go watch it before you continue on with this video. Okay, so the attorney that filed this lawsuit is Tyrone Blackburn on behalf of a woman named Grace. And the suit is filed against Christian Combs, who the lawsuit notes is a 25-year-old auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. What? And then before <laughs> listing out details for the next defendant, who is Sean Combs, the lawsuit says, quote, unfortunately, as the saying has it, the apple does not fall from the tree. Sean Combs has been accused of several acts of SA violence and other deplorable conducts and is the father of Christian Combs, who has seemingly taken after his father and, and the family business of reckless partying, violence, and other illegal conduct. There's also some other John and Jane Doe's who are listed as defendants. Okay, so when you get to the allegations in this lawsuit, it says that Grace was a stewardess in the yachting industry. And in December of 2022, she and her team were informed that they had been hired to work on a particular yacht during the holiday period. And it turns out that the person who chartered that yacht was Diddy. So while on the yacht, Grace works the shift from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., which included dinner and drink service for the guests. First of all, that's a long ass time. Dude says that the makeup of the yacht quickly evolved from just Diddy and his family to a constant rotation of suspected sex workers and other A-list celebrities. The suit continues on to say that Grace found it very suspicious that after one shot of Delion tequila or one mixed drink, various women on the yacht would be falling over themselves, panicking or passing out, which led her to reasonably believe that the alcohol given to these women was likely laced. So apparently Diddy allegedly uh, has a history of lacing alcohol uh, for these women. My thing is, why do they have to lace anything to get what it is that they want from these women like normally especially these only fans girls normally they come in to do it anyway and why would you have to drug a sex worker that doesn't even make sense if a person is there and the job is to do it to you what do i have to drug you for <laughs> like that's i'm already giving it to you you know what i'm saying so i don't understand that it then says that Grace was aware that Rodney Jones, a producer who was employed to work on the Love album, quote, was required to be on standby for musical recordings, often late into the night. So on or about the early morning of December 28th, 2022, Grace is told that Christian Combs was coming over to the yacht to record in the yacht's makeshift recording studio. So the suit alleges that Christian came over and was heavily intoxicated, but that didn't stop him from ordering more shots. And then the paragraph reads, quote, defendant Christian Combs was playing Cassie's Me and You in the background. Cassie was an artist under S. Combs and was his former Christian love. Christian Combs was playing me and you. Ordering more shots. And then the paragraph reads, quote, Fendant Christian Combs was playing Cassie's me and you in the background. Cassie was an artist under S. Combs and was his former love. What does that have to do with anything? Who also accused S. Combs of S.A. and, and mental. So Christian, according to this lawsuit, asked Grace to bring him some shots. And then, and then, according to her, he started pressuring her to take shots from a bottle that he may have brought on board with him. She says out of wanting to be polite, she took them. But then, according to her, Christian insisted that she stay chatting in the studio and sit beside him. Grace says that she asked to leave, but Christian allegedly became aggressive to the point that he, quote, violently grabbed her arm and began hurting her. He pulled her to the seat beside him and prevented her from getting up. He then forced her to take another shot. The suit continues on to allege that Christian touched Grace's body and also tried to kiss her neck, face, and hands. Grace says she doesn't remember everything because of the alcohol, but she alleges that Rodney Jones has an audio recording of the incident. And then they provide a... How does Rodney have a recording of that? A. B. How does she know Rodney? Why would Rodney have a recording of that? Why Rodney ass didn't help? Transcript of some of the incident that seems to be based on the recording that Rodney Jones allegedly has. So after the incident, Grace says that she left the studio. And, but a short time later, Christian called for her and, quote, demanded that she find him a place to sleep on the yacht. So she ends up directing him to the movie room, which has one door to exit and enter. 
Grace says that she entered the room, but then she alleges Christian blocked her from leaving it. According to the lawsuit, she then went into a corner of the room and Christian became, quote, physically and extremely aggressive. He cornered her and started to touch her. He then undressed himself and tried some other stuff. But Grace says she began fighting him and then her partner, who was on board with her, came in the room, which is how she was finally able to leave. The following day, Grace says that she told the captain, but he only berated and scolded her about the incident and then assigned her to work front of the house, which required personally serving Christian Combs while they continued to be on the yacht. The suit also alleges that the captain received a generous tip from Diddy in order to keep him quiet. In what seems to be a signature for Tyrone Blackburn lawsuits, this lawsuit also includes redacted names and footnotes about who those people really are. It also has some other allegations with some names redacted. Grace says that she has suffered greatly as a result of this incident, including losing her partner, falling into a depression, and other things, which is why she's suing for a battery, SA, premises liability, which is specifically against Diddy since he was the one that leased the yacht, aiding and abetting, which is also against Diddy because according to this lawsuit, Diddy knew that an was being or going to be committed because he encouraged and fostered an environment and culture to his son and employees to do whatever they what? want to the yacht staff. Some of the other causes of action <clears throat> includes intentional infliction of emotional distress and negative infliction of emotional distress. She's asked for a jury trial. So like the other lawsuits, we will see how this plays out. As always, docs are on my Patreon. And if you don't want to join my Patreon, don't. Okay. I like that. Um... Y'all, that's a mess because if this is true, this is one of those apples don't fall too far from the tree because what would, why would he, why would Christian feel as though he has to do that <clears throat> as well? And granted, you know, when some people just have a fixation on something, they just have a fixation on something, but both of them. And, like, I just don't, I don't know. And her saying that Rodney has the recording, that really don't add up to me. While they playing me and you in the background, I just don't know. I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. I am just here to figure out what's going on and to get the results because we need to we need to speed up this process and they need to go ahead and let us know what's really going on okay love y'all appreciate y'all hell yeah